Welcome to WHHI's Daily News. I'm Ali McNair, and here's a look at your headlines. A school voucher bill is headed to South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster for his signature now that it's passed in both chambers at the State House. The bill gives families who qualify a $6,000 voucher, which can be used to send students to private schools instead of public schools. Opponents claim that taxpayer dollars will be spent on sending children to schools that are unaccountable and will hurt public schools in the process. There is research to back both arguments. The legislation was sponsored by Buford State Rep Shannon Erickson, who says no school can meet the unique needs of every child and that public schools will now have to compete for students. The program will begin with poorer families, but will expand to include families making up to $120,000 a year by the 2026-2027 school year. Governor Henry McMaster supports private school choice and has said he supports education savings accounts. The South Carolina Supreme Court has ordered authorities to return a convicted killer to prison. A secret judge's order had freed 38-year-old Jeroid Price 16 years early because he reportedly gave information to law enforcement that saved lives. Price was convicted of murder at an area Columbia nightclub back in 2003. Justices in the state's highest court voided that early release order and expressed concern about the secrecy of the process, as well as the number of years deducted from Price's sentence. Now, would you hire back an employee who sued you and settled out of court? That's a question being raised by some when it comes to the hiring of Eric Larson, who is the Buford County's Capital Improvements Projects Director. Larson used to be a county employee until he resigned and then sued former county administrator Ashley Jacobs for discrimination and creating a hostile workplace. That suit was settled out of court. Current County Administrator Eric Greenway hired Larson back at a higher position for slightly less money. Greenway says Larson was the best candidate for the job. Larson's duties include getting the county caught up on lagging maintenance projects. The Buford County Council has strengthened the St. Helena Island's cultural protection overlay to keep golf courses out of a planned development on Pine Island. Now, developer Elvio Tropiano says he might just build a lot more houses instead and make an even larger impact on the area. Conservation advocates say that won't happen, but Tropiano says current zoning would still allow him to build more homes on what was going to be golf course property. Hundreds of residents have opposed any development. Well, speaking of golf, two low country golf teams have won SCISA state championships. Hilton Head Christian Academy's boys team won its second title in three years, the Class 3A championship, beating out Hilton Head Prep, while Heritage Academy won its first Class A title all up in Conway this week. Justin Jarrett will have more coming up in Loco Sports. Well, much is made of the sea turtle season that begins in May along the Low Country coast, but Getting less attention this time of year is alligator breeding season. You may hear the bellowing of the male gators as courtships have already begun, and the mating season usually takes place in May and June when females lay their groups of eggs, numbering often between 30 and 50, in a mound made from vegetation and nearby foliage. The eggs usually hatch around Labor Day, with newborns measuring less than 12 inches long. The usual warnings about not feeding the gators are being issued by wildlife officials, as well as warnings to stay away from the edges of lagoons. Now, for more information on these stories and more, visit the news sources on your screen. And be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you have a story idea, email us at news at whhitv.com. And now with a look at sports, here's Justin Jarrett. Hey, it's time for Last Night in the Loco on WHHI, powered by Loco Sports. We told you Wednesday about Hilton Head Christian Academy outdueling rival Hilton Head Prep for the Skiza 3A boys golf title, but we had a second team from the Loco bring home some hardware. Heritage Academy breezed to the Skiza 1A title with a two-day total of 6-12 on the Hackler course, finishing 36 shots clear of runner-up Cambridge Academy. Michael Gavin shot 74 and 73 to claim medalist honors. Colleton County softball outslugged Bluffton 20 to 10 to wrap up a region crown. Shandy Brown, Bailey Cox, Chrissy Holmes, and Lanasia Sanders each had three of the Cougars' 21 hits. 
James Island bounced back to split with May River and claimed the number two seed, while the Trojans wrapped up the region baseball title with a 4-1 win over the Sharks, as Newberry, Signee, Keeler Osmond outdueled Charleston Southern commit Tyson Brasington in a high-quality matchup. Hillnet High slipped up at home against Lucy Beckham, but will be the number two seed in the playoffs, and Colleton County's Cohen Crosby threw a jam to split with Bluffton. Hilton Head Christian Academy snapped a five-game losing streak with a 13-3 win over Patrick Henry on senior night. Ben Eddy spun a gem, and the Bird Boys combined for six RBIs. On the pitch, Hilton Head Prep's girls ran their winning streak to six games with a 6-1 route of Buford Academy, and Colleton County swept Colleton Prep in the Waltonboro Derby. For Loco Sports and WHHI, I'm Justin Jarrett. Until next time, go Loco. Thanks, Justin. With our weather, here's Maria. Thanks, Allie. Yep, so taking a look ahead, it does look like we see storms throughout the rest of the week and into the weekend, but then taking a look into next week, it does look like the weather is going to turn and we are going to see plenty of sunshine. Taking a look Friday, however, it's going to be scattered showers and thunderstorms throughout the day, and those storms are supposed to continue on into the evening. Temperature-wise, Hill and I is going to have a high of 80, a low of 67. Bluffton is going to have a high of 82, a low of 66, and Buford is going to have a high of 82 and a low of 67. The sunrise for Friday is going to be at 639 and sunset is going to be at 801. Taking a look at the beach tides, low tide is going to be at 1144 a.m. and high tide is going to be at 417 p.m. Taking a look into the weekend and a little bit into next week, Saturday it's going to be sunny to partly cloudy throughout the day. Then we may see a possible late night shower. Highs are going to be in the 80s, lows in the upper 60s. Come Sunday, we're going to see scattered showers and thunderstorms throughout the day again, but it should be clearing up by the evening. Highs are going to be in the 70s, lows in the 60s. And then come Monday, it's just going to be sunny with highs in the 70s and lows in the 50s. That's it for today. Let's head back to the desk. Thanks, Maria. Coming up next, We'll find out about a business that's working with nonprofits to help build community.